ATGNAT podcast. I'm Ronnie, back with Boz, and today we're trying to capitalize off of the Stranger Things hysteria. We just got finished with season four, volume two. Yep. So why not come on here? Because I know Boz is new to Stranger Things. Why not come on here and we're going to rank every major character or most of the major characters from season four. And we'll see what we come up with. We got doubles. Uh, we'll talk about each one of these and see where they all fall. Boz, how's everything going? Going great. Now, you just recently found out, I think it was like maybe not even a month ago, you were, uh, you text and said, do you watch Stranger Things? And I said, yeah, well, I've seen them all. And you were like, I'm thinking about starting. And then the other day, you were like, I'm finished. And I looked at my wife and I was like, this dude has already watched four seasons. He's ahead of us already. So take us through the process of how you just, how you have that much time. Well, first off, uh, I did text you probably three weeks ago. And the truth is back when the first season came out, me and my wife watched the first season and we thought it was pretty good. Season two, I made it through, I think, three episodes, and I was completely out on it. I just, I, I didn't like it. I hated it. And I never watched another one after that. And then season four comes out a month ago. Everyone's losing their head about it. And I was like, okay, I, I mean, I should like this show. There's no reason for me not, based on the things I like, shows and movies I like, I, I've, I've got to like this show. So I went back, I asked you, I was like, do you watch it? And you said, yes. You said you really liked it. And I said, okay, I'm going to give it another shot. Wife was not on board this time at all. So because of that, I could burn through it, right? When there's just one of you watching it, you can burn through something. Um, so I did, man. I And I freaking loved it. And, you know, I stopped on season two the first time. Through this process, again, season two is by far the worst season to me. So there was a reason I think I stopped. But if, once I pushed through it, three and four were really good. Four is awesome. So here we are. What, I didn't think there was a, a chance that they could top season three. Season three, in my mind, was really, really good as far as character development, as far as uh, the mood and the humor. And they did it. Season four is I'm always going to like season one the best because I love the eighties. I love the, the soundtrack. It was at a time where I found this show. I was like, good Lord. And I burned through every episode in one night. So okay. yeah, season two, I, I like season two, love season three. And I thought it was almost impossible that season four could live up to the expectations after a couple of years, but it did. It provided probably the best season of stranger things ever. And, yeah. and not only with the characters and not only having like three to four storylines going at once, but also finding a way to tie in everything that's happened that might not have made sense right back into the story. So now we know who Vecna is. We know why all this stuff is happening at Hawkins. It's not like a hell mouth or anything. It all stems from that research laboratory and Papa. So I thought they put a nice little bow on why everything is happening right there. And they ended it great because there okay. is there is a cliffhanger, but it doesn't involve any of the characters unless you count Max. Everybody's there and accounted for. Nobody's fake dead. And now what happens next? It's got me super excited. I mean, is the next season going to be like a post op uh, apocalyptic type show where everything's destroyed because the upside down is now on earth? Or is it going to be a situation where Vecna has been dormant for however many years and then it's finally built his strength up and is ready to try to take over. I mean, I'm excited about it. I'm super excited about it too. The good cliffhanger and Season five is going to be the final season. When is it coming out? It's coming out next year or in two years? I would imagine two years if I had to guess. Yeah. Man, every one of these recent ones has been like a freaking movie. Like every episode is like its own movie. So I understand if they take forever to do this stuff. Because it's like they're creating eight movies to come out in two years, you know. So, but Whenever. soundtrack, holy crap. Every, every year, 
It's so good. Every, I mean, every season, it's so good. And then this one had Metallica, had Journey, Kate Bush. It's so good. So good. I thought it would be cheesy Eddie playing the guitar on top of the camper, but it, it was like a good cheese. <laughs> it, was. it was. It was so freaking ridiculous it that it was, was awesome. So, but. I'm like you, when I saw volume two or whatever they called the second part of season four come out and it said the first one was like over an hour and a half and the second one was like two hours and 20 minutes. I was like, let's go. Let's freaking go. And me and my wife sat down and managed to get it done in a couple of days, which is great for us. I mean, I, I can't say enough high things about Stranger Things. And I think this past season that we just watched propels it into all time great TV shows. Wow. I do. Damn. I think okay. it's right I think it's right up there with anything that's ever been produced on TV as far as story, characters, content, and it is it's, it's really great. So what we're finna do right here is we have four categories. Amazing, pretty self explanatory, pretty good. They're all pretty self explanatory. Could have been better, and of course, awful. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna start with a character. I'll talk about it a little bit. Boz will talk about it a little bit. We've got doubles, so there doesn't have to be any averaging up of characters or agreeing here. If I think something's amazing, it's going in the amazing column. If he thinks something's awful, it goes into his awful. The only problem is we should have uh, made it where the pictures were a little bit different, but uh, I'll do that next time. So is there any particular one you want to start with or go in order of this right here, Boz? Let's go in order of this thing. All right. So first we have... This way. Yeah. Dustin Henderson. So <laughs> I looked at I looked at my wife and I was like, bless his heart. He's one of <laughs> he's one of two people I've said that about. When the show first started, all these cute kids, everything's great. And now here we are, six years later, and life is starting to slap them right in the face. And no more than with Dustin Henderson, who looks like a female PE coach. So and with all that being said, how he looks, uh, still a great character. He's still a good enough actor with this character to bring you in, make you love him, no matter what the situation. Always cussing, but I guess that's his gimmick. Dustin Henderson, and I think we should add, this is season four use only, Boz, not the entirety of the series. But for yeah. season four, I'm going to say Dustin Henderson because he plays the sidekick to Eddie, the sidekick to Steve. He's in the Dungeons and, and Dragons Hellfire Club. Um, he's a lot more vocal and upfront than he has been in the past. I'm going to put him into pretty good. I well, thought he could have been better. He could have been better. I mean, I don't. I think he would have been into amazing if. The whole thing would have took place in Hawkins, but pretty good character, pretty good this season. Amazing overall. I don't need to see it in the comments. I know he's great, but this season, I thought he was pretty good. Yeah, and I like the way we're doing this, just by one season alone, because season three, he would have been amazing. He yeah. was Him and Steve together, incredible combo. Uh, I'm going to agree with you on this one. I've got him as pretty good. Uh, a slight decline like i said from season three but still when he's on screen he's such a good character because he can be funny he can be real serious and i feel like he's a really good actor too i can't you know you don't see these people in other things but in that role i feel like he's really good so I, i've got him as a very enjoyable character on screen pretty good all right next we've got eddie munson so i'm watching this season and i see another actor in a terrible eighties wig. And I love every bit of it. And he's the head of the dungeons and dragons club. He's the school freak bragging about not graduating for three years. He's the one that is with Chrissy whenever she's, uh, possessed by Vecna and gets broken into 50 different pieces. They think he's satanic. They think he's the one doing the killings and the whole town is after him. And it turns out he's just a really decent guy that admits that he has a fault of being a coward and always runs the other way. He ran when Chrissy was in trouble. Yeah. He's run and hide. And at the end of it, 
He has a redeeming arc where he makes sure he saves Dustin and he runs towards the danger and sacrifices himself to try to save all these people that were trying to help him. So Eddie Munson, even though he's got the last name of Roy Munson, I'm going to go amazing character for season four simply for the fact that he's playing master of puppets <laughs> on top of a camper in a different dimension to try to, to try to draw in hell bats. Amazing. They do a good job of establishing these characters as people that you're immediately tied into. And Eddie Munson's a great character. You know, it's such a silly scene, but for that character, it fit. It's just, that, it's just so, that is just exactly what he would do in that, in that, and just having the time of his life, knowing he's about to get ripped to pieces. All right. But for me, Eddie, I've actually got, could have been better. Uh, and this is, this is an improvement too, because the first two or three episodes, I did not like this guy at all. I thought he was cheesy. I thought his character was, I thought he was overacting to be honest with you a little bit, but he did redeem himself the last couple of episodes. And I, I was finding myself rooting for him hard, but I feel like he still could have been a little better. So I think I've got him in a good spot. All right. Next is the star of the show. We've got 11. So all over the map for 11 in this series. The series starts off at the beginning of season four. I guess I should say season four starts off and she's at school in California being picked on uh, living life without her powers, uh, nerd, Mrs. Mike. The kids are just absolutely horrible to her. She misses Hopper. Who's dead picked on, picked on, picked on. The only friend she's got is will and will's a weirdo throughout the whole series, uh, the whole season. But we transition from there. Mike shows up, then all hell breaks loose, and she ends back up with Papa and uh, Mad About You. Gets her powers back. It's revealed in the beginning of one episode that makes it look like she killed everybody in the facility. They had yeah. to tell that backstory where she didn't kill it, uh, kill all these kids, but actually it was the guy that became Vecna, number one. Number one. And he yeah, he tried to kill her, and she sent him into another dimension. I'm leaving out the fact that she removed his chip that kept him from hurting anybody because he said they both should escape. So we find out that Eleven is responsible for all of this that's happening in Hawkins, and it's because she sent this guy to the Upside Down and turned him into a demon pretty much. But you get the redeeming arc, sort of like Kenobi, where she gets her powers back and gets to fight Vecna multiple times, just kicking his ass every time they do it. And at the end, she's got Mike. You got a great scene with her and Mike where Mike tells her he loves her. And I'm not a big fan of this character usually, but I'm going to put her right up here next to Eddie Munson. I thought she was amazing. Wow. I thought she was amazing this season. All right, I'm going to go with uh, could have been better. I honestly can't. I am i haven't been a big fan of Eleven throughout the whole series. And Fans don't lie. To be honest, it's because I feel like there's so much more drama and suspense when she's not involved. I feel like when she shows up, it's like, all right, everything's, everything's good now. Everything's going to be saved. I did like that she didn't have her powers the first half of the season or most of the season. Uh, so that was, uh, you know, a new twist. Um, smoked that girl with the with the skate. Just smoked dude, her. Smoked her. And I didn't, we didn't see that girl again the rest of the series. Uh, but that's why the 80s were. That's why the yeah. 80s were so great. If somebody's picking on you, making fun of your dead father, you pick up something, you hit them in the face. And when that scar will remind that girl from here on out not to be a total jerk to somebody because that's not, that's, that's not the way to live your life. And that's the way they did it in the eighties. They would always break somebody's face and that life lesson would teach the person, Hey, I don't, I shouldn't do that. Get off me. Bia. Well, so, I mean, you know, I just, I, she could have been better. And like I said, I just think, she's too much of like a safe card. She's like an ace up your sleeve. Oh my God, we're all going to die. And she just shows up and it's just like, okay, well, she's here to save us. 
I, I, I just, I, I don't know. I know that's controversial or whatever, but I don't care. Could have been better. Next, we're going to talk about the douchebag whose girlfriend gets possessed and broken up, and he spends the rest of the movie hunting devil worshippers like a true 80s madman. We're talking about Jason, the captain of the basketball team. This character was written in a way that you absolutely hate him. At the same time, you get to see this breakdown that is occurring in his life. Episode after episode, he's more sweaty. He's more erratic looking to the very end of it where he's buying a gun. He's he's doing whatever it takes to try to find out what happened to his girlfriend. Uh, he's a complete psycho. Now, with all that being said, they wrote the character for you to hate him, so I probably should rank him high. But I'm going off my personal opinion here. This was one of the characters I could not stand. Why is the character here? I hate him, I hate him, I hate him. And I love the fact that he got cut in half whenever the upside down erupted to come back up top towards Hawkins. Completely agree. This when this guy appears on screen, I'm just like, oh man, he's back. He's just so, he reminds me of like he he's like he's trying to be Tom Cruise or something like that. I feel like he's a young actor that wants to be the next Tom Cruise. Just like dude, just just I, like you said though, he actually played his role perfect, I guess. But I can't stand him. So awful. I don't like it. Next up, we got Lucas. Playing basketball, I thought early on, I was like, okay, this is great writing. Mike and Dustin are in the Hellfire Club. Uh, They're Dungeons and Dragons for life. Lucas has moved on to the basketball. We're going to actually see these characters grow apart as Lucas wants to become popular. But it's revealed he's also in the Dungeons and Dragons Club. But at the same time, I thought those guys choosing Dungeons and Dragons over watching the championship game would cause some type of – fraction between the group it doesn't end up happening like that because there's no time this whole series is so action-packed him and max uh that relationship uh starts getting a little bit better towards the end of season four uh they mentioned that max is taking it hard since her brother died he she doesn't talk to anybody Lucas's sister's great, but when it comes to Lucas, made the game-winning shot, uh, takes a beating from Jason at the end of it to save Max. But at the same time, I thought he could have been better. I thought he really was on the back burner this season. Still a good character, but season four, they could have used him a little bit better. I don't know how. I, I can't write as good as these people can. I just know that he wasn't pretty good. He wasn't amazing. He wasn't awful. So he's got to be, could have been better. Yeah, I think I agree with you. I'm going to put him at could have been better, too. Um, you know, oh, that's close. Because he's also pretty good. But it could have been better. Okay. <laughs> it's so close. It's like we need a fifth category right there in the middle. No, it could have been better. It's a good, a good place for him. Um, I feel like he's going to have a much bigger presence in the final season. A lot because of Max. But uh, I think he's got big, big things ahead. I like him. I, I don't mind him at all. Plus, he's he rocking. Been, he he hair. I feel like he wasn't in the season a lot either. You know, for like major scenes, he wasn't really in there. So could have been better. Next up, we got Max, who really you take eleven out of here, and Max was one of the main focal points of this season. Yeah. Uh, Like I said before, dealing with the trauma of losing her brother, nightmares, not sleeping, headaches, and you find out that's all symptoms of Vecna coming for you later on. There's a scene where you think she's about to be taken. I got a lot of problems with this character because she made my wife cry, thinking she was going to die in that season. I think it was episode four. Yep. Where she runs and dives out just the last, uh, last second when they put the music on her ear. Really good character. The flashbacks added, and I'll I'll admit this right now. Episode four, I said, that is such a cop-out. You could establish Vecna as a true threat if he killed her right there. Then it's anything goes. Yeah. But you let her escape. They are so they are so weak and and scared to kill off one of these main characters. Fast forward to episode eight, where they go through the process and Vecna is breaking this girl's arm and leg. And I audibly shout, no, like, right there. <laughs> so, I mean, this, I mean, 
either, either way, I'm going to say she was pretty good in this series. I mean, this season, she was pretty good. We're, we're, we're agreeing. The last three we've agreed with, I don't like it. Pretty good. She was almost amazing. She, she was very good on screen. Uh, central role, she has such – I mean, every se- she started in season two, I believe, right? And then every season since, she's had a bigger and bigger and bigger role. Now, I don't know how they're going to do that with season five because she is like a pretzel. Well, that yeah, and when my wife pointed out uh, when when Eleven goes into her brain or into her body at the end of it when she's in the hospital, nobody's home. There's nothing there. Yeah. So where where's her... Uh, her soul where where's her mind where's it at pixies uh i don't know i mean is is she dead will she be dead in the next one it it, will vecna take her body but i I assumed when when l tried to reach her at the end by doing the little mind trick thing and there was nothing there but empty spaces that whatever was her life force is gone and technically she died for one minute you know they said and which is why Vecna, why the upside down was able to cross over into our world. Um, that's a great explanation, Boz, because I was going to want, I, mean, I was going to say the, one of the, the, the problems I had was Max had to die, but she's alive right now, but you're absolutely right. The one minute that she was dead, he was able to cross over. That is that a great long, explanation. That was long enough. I guess that was just all it took. Cause once it happens, you can't go back, you know? So like she, AIDS, she was dead long enough for it to happen. And, uh, so yeah, I mean, both arms broken, both legs broken. She's blind. I mean, holy hell, uh, she's going to have it rough in the next season, but she's a really good character. Mike's up next. And he's the other guy that I went bless his heart. The cute (laughs) little kid from season one has grown up to look like Rocky Dennis. Uh, Season three, I could have doused him with kerosene and lit him on fire, like one of those things, and like, like the thing in Kurt Russell in that Kurt Russell movie. Yes, he was an annoying character. I thought they didn't use him a lot in this season. He wasn't like up front and center, and I think yeah. that's a good thing for his character because it made him more likable whenever he had his, whenever he had certain scenes. I enjoyed uh, when he finally tried to reach out to Eleven. And I actually enjoyed his uh, interaction with Hopper at the end where he's like, uh, you lost weight after he told him you got taller. Yeah. A, a, a real rehab season and for me, for Mike, and the fact that I would have had him awful a season ago. But I'm going to say pretty good. I enjoyed it. All right. I'm going to have Mike. It's awful. I can't stand this guy. I don't like to look at him. I don't like to hear him talk. I think he's become more and more of a baby as the seasons have gone by. I liked him in season one a lot, but he's just slowly, slowly fading for me. So awful. I can't stand to see him on the screen. I, 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 something's got to happen to one of these major OG characters in season five. And I wouldn't, I don't think it's going to be him, but it wouldn't hurt me if it was. No, it's going to be 11. Uh, Nancy is up next. Never been a fan of this character. Never been, never understood the appeal of this character, how she's looked at as, uh, a a pretty person. I think honestly, she's an ugly human being. I mean, I'm sorry. I know I, I, yes, before you hit me in the comments, I have looked in the mirror. She's ugly. Uh, she's not nice. Uh, there's nothing. She's a weirdo and not even, not even yeah, stuck up, not even a cool weirdo. I mean, she can't shoot a shotgun like Linda Blair in Terminator 2, so she's got that going for her. But I'm going to put her right here based off season four. Pretty good. Wow. All right, I've got her at uh, could have been better. I'm actually kind of a fan of her character. Uh, I think she's – dude, I mean, she she might be the smallest person in this cast, and they have got her – holding a shot, a sawed off shotgun going right up against Vecna. And I kind of thought it was like believable. I thought she was like ready to go to battle with this dude. And so she's kind of grown on me. Um, I, I do think she could have been a little better though. I, I don't know. I don't know how they don't pay me to write this stuff or 
come up with storylines, but uh, I'm, a, I'm a fan. All right, next up we got my favorite. And like I said, whether I hate the character or whether I love the character, I'm trying to base it solely on season four. Steve Harrington, I believe, is one of the greatest characters in the history of television. The moment he took that bat with the nails in it and went back into the house, Mm -hmm. changed everything for him. He's gotten better and better and better as these seasons go on, and his character has become more and more developed as these seasons go on. He was great. They even teased that he might die. I told my wife, I was like, if they kill anybody, they're going to kill Steve because he's my favorite. (laughs) He was really good this season. He wasn't amazing, but you did get glimpses of what he wants out of his life. Talking about he wants six kids. He wants to ride in an RV uh, you know, around the country and stop at beaches during the summer with all his kids and things like that. Yeah. And as I talk, I'm going to roll him right up here to amazing because that's where Steve Harrington belongs. He's absolutely amazing. Uh, I believe – we can't possibly do this because there's only four categories, but I think he should be above amazing because he is that good. This dude, he's like a, he's one of those characters you'd like, I would hang out with this guy if I was in high school or whatever age this guy is. I think he, has he graduated yet? Yeah. He, him he's and Nancy. Graduated. Yeah. 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 Um, man, he's such a good, he's funny. He's charismatic. He's caring. He he cares for Nancy and Robin. Um, man, he's so good. Him and, and him and Dustin together. I know we're only doing season four. Season three was incredible with them two together as a combo. They were hilarious together. But he has only gotten better every season. He is awesome. He is perfect spot for amazing. My favorite character in the whole series. Mine too. Next up, we got Dr. Brenner, a.k.a. Papa. So... Papa. He shows back up, and I'm like, did this guy supposedly die in, in another season? And I didn't know about it, or I don't. I mean, it's easy for me to forget stuff. I have a terrible memory. But when he shows back up, it, I mean, did I miss out on him dying in a previous season for this to be such a big reveal that he's still alive? I don't remember. And I just I just buried through all these seasons. So, I mean. I think they he left him, like, unconscious or something like that. He was, like, kind of, you, you didn't know. There's multiple times throughout this season where they try to make once he shows up anyway, where they make him make it out like he's going to be a good guy. And there's nothing about this guy that is good. The I mean, I care for you. No, he cares about harnessing her power so he can do something with it. And I love the fact that when the military blew his chest out, that she didn't give him the satisfaction of saying that she forgave him. She right. just let him die. And I look and I, I'm I'm sitting there. I'm like. Dude, you just got your chest blowed out like Jesse Ventura and Predator, and you're rolling around here with this death scene that lasts like four minutes. I don't know if that was in his contract or whatever. I'm going to overact this death scene. Just die and go away, okay? Because you're an awful character. You're an awful character, and I'm moving him there right now because I can't stand the guy. Yeah. Uh, I thought he was stupid in Dark Knight when he died with his leg behind him like uh, Lloyd Christmas. But he was pretty good in Vision Quest, so that's where he goes. Uh, this guy's awful, and I mean, at the at the actor, I don't like this guy in anything he's ever been in. Like, and I feel like he he was supposed to be a bigger actor, maybe like in the nineties, early nineties, maybe or even eighties. Pirate, pirate movie got him with Gina Davis. Didn't see that. I did see a medical movie though. He was like a med student. That actually wasn't bad, but. Anything this dude's played in, in the we got Southwest Bacon Whoppers coming on here. Anything this guy has played in in the past 20 years has been awful. So, you know, and this character is so annoying. He's only got one, he's got one tone, he's got one style, and it's all about just, oh, he's just, I can't stand him on the screen. I'm so glad he got it. And I mean, you know, knowing these things, they're going to have flashbacks. He's probably going to be in season five. Somehow he might be even still be alive. God knows. So who knows? But I hope he's done. He's awful. Get him off the screen. 
Yeah, I, mean, I was hoping to see him break character and start screaming or something since he's always in that same monotone voice. Same over and over. Now we got the big heel, Vecna, a.k.a. number one. Talked about it earlier, how it was revealed. He killed everybody in the lab, all the other kids, and as he was about to try to kill Eleven, she sent him back to another dimension. Really cool scene as it shows him going through the alternate dimensions and his skin changing shape. And landing in the upside down, he later gives a backstory about how he walked around and he saw the things that were untouched by human hands and he decided he was going to rule this realm. Great character based on Freddy Krueger, I know. Amazing character. I'm, that's all I can say. He is absolutely amazing as the bad guy. And when I saw it, when I first saw the teaser trailer for Stranger Things before this season came out, I was like, what is that? That looks so cheesy but they did it and they wrote it so great. And the actor that actually played this part made it work. Great, great, amazing character. I'm going to agree with you on amazing. I, I stick and go ahead and stick them up there because in my opinion, so many, I think you know this too. So many reasons I love a certain show or I love a certain movie is a hundred percent based on the villain. If, if I think the villain is cool, I'm all for it. And I think I might like this season the most a lot because of Vecna. Vecna is awesome. He's got that voice. He comes on screen and he's just it just overpowering. I think he's a really cool villain. And that's the thing, like he's a villain, right? All the other seasons have been monsters. This dude's a villain. This guy could have his own slasher horror thing in the eighties if he if he, you know, was back then. So, um, yeah, he's really cool, and I can't wait to see him in the next one. All right, next up, we got Yuri, who is the smuggler. So, Joyce, that's one on a rider, right? Yep. Joyce gets a package in the mail from Russia. Uh, her and Murray decipher the contents and figure out that it's Hopper. Somebody has Hopper. She calls the number, uh, meets up with Dimitri, who has Yuri, the peanut butter smuggler, that's going to fly them in and fly them out. The only problem is Yuri does what the stranger things characters do. He turned on them. He was a traitor. He turned them into the KGB. They all got locked up and he has a redeeming arc at the end after they break out where they force him to do something. And he's just wasting time and wasting time. And Dimitri looks at him and goes, where's the peanut butter smuggler that I heard all the great things about the war. And he actually takes the part out and puts it in the helicopter, and he's there for the cool scene where he rescues everybody out of the prison. Oh, the definition of a bit part, yeah. but in his small time, he went, in my mind, from awful to could have been better to pretty stinking good. I'm going to have to go with... Uh... Gut instinct says awful. I didn't. I just did not like this character. Uh, you're right. He was a bit actor. I feel like, and not and not really that good either. So I mean, there's just nothing. He did. He did nothing for me. He he's awful. <laughs> I don't even have much to say about him. I just did not like him on screen. Well, if you'd asked me after the first couple of episodes of this season, this next guy, I would have said completely. Awful. Next up is Argyle, the pizza guy who mm -hmm. starts as a tiny, tiny, small fractional character. But by the end, he's right up there with everybody else. He is the comic relief. Like I said, there's like three sections or four sections of this show going on. You've got the guys that are in California trying to get to 11. You got the guys in Hawkins trying to deal with the upside down. And you got the guys in Russia trying to get out of that. So there's three interweaving stories going on. And his part became bigger and bigger and bigger. Like I said, he always was there with the comments that would, you know, help, you know, lift, lightening the mood, not letting it get too serious. He comes up with the plan to go to the pizza place and set up a think tank or whatever it's called, deprivation chamber uh, for 11 so she can go and try to help Max. I'm going to go with pretty good. I'm gonna go with pretty good too. He was uh he was hilarious. And he you're right, he was the comic relief. Um and I think he's a really good actor. Like so many of these people, right, have 
they've been through just otherworldly experiences. So it's not like, I mean, sure, they get shocked and surprised and everything, but they've already seen it, right? They've seen crazy stuff already. This dude has never seen anything like this. So when he sees something happen, he like screams, like a girl, little girl screaming. And it is hilarious because I feel like that is how a lot of people would really take it. So I think he's very funny. Uh, I love his little, his whole style thing, man. I think he pulls it off. Um, so he's, he, he was right on the line. I, he could have been amazing, but I think uh, pretty good's a good spot. Next year, we'll see what happens. All right. Next up, we got Dimitri, who was the prison guard, who formed a friendship with Hopper and helped him to escape. I like this guy. I got to admit it. I thought he was going to bite the big one at some point during the show, but he didn't. I thought he was going to be like the guy from, is it season two or season three? That the Russian guy that gets killed, I think it's season three. Season three. Yeah, but uh, I love the fact that when he'd ask him, what do you think? He would give him odds, 101, million to one, yeah. things like that. He is a really good character. And here's how I'm looking at this, Boz. He wasn't amazing. He wasn't awful. He couldn't have been better. I thought he was just right. I'm going to put him at pretty good. I was glad to see he lived. It's going to be interesting to see if he's in the next season or if he just disappears. He's in America now, so he may just try to play the system and hide. I don't know. But really good character, and I was glad he lived throughout the whole season. Yeah, I, I liked him. Uh, like you said, he wasn't amazing. He was definitely better than uh, – could have been better. So pretty good a good spot. Uh, he uh, – I don't know. He, he played that role really well. Him and Hopper were really cool together. I thought they played well off each other. And uh, he kind of had like a good quality about him. Like he obviously was trying to help. And he's actually the one that talked to Yuri. He told Yuri like, hey, just because this thing, you've seen the monsters these people are talking about. Just because they're trying to, you know, take, uh, they're trying to attack this small little town, doesn't mean they're not going to come for the motherland. So we got to help these people save the world, basically. And that's pretty much the spark that Yuri needed too, you know? So yeah, good character. Pretty good. Up next, we got Hopper. Another character that is just amazing. I'm going to roll him up there real quick. Uh, he's played the drunk in this, in this series. He's played the, the guy who regrets losing his daughter and his wife. He's played uh, the slob. He's played the great sheriff, the terrible sheriff. And in this season, they give him the action hero role because he is he's wielding a sword. He's using machine guns and shotguns to kill these 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 demons. So good. And at the end of it, he shows up smiling, you know, three inches <laughs> on the door and it is it's it's amazing this is another character that i think is going to go down as an all-time character in television and uh, the guy that acts it does really really good with it yep all right i'm gonna agree with you again he's an amazing category he's he's so fun to be to see on screen he's a great character he's you know 100 pounds overweight one season this season he's you know 100 pounds he looks like because he's been in prison but um He's just like he's like he's a bad ass dude. Edit, but he's just so good, man. I mean, he is. He's and he's he's got little funny quirks to him too. He's not like he's trying to be funny, but to kind of put a little bit of humor in there with him. And he's just like a good action hero, you know. And he's perfect for this. They need eleven is the female, you know, superhero. They need a male counterpart that is there to save today when it's needed. And he's so good. All right. Next up we got, is it Jonathan? Jonathan. Jonathan Byers. He's had a great role in every season, except this season. I don't know what he's got going on. If he had other movie roles or what, but I thought his use, the way they use this character in season four is absolutely awful. I think, uh, turning him into a pothead uh, he didn't have anything of substance to say until the last episode when he, you know, was talking to Will. Yeah. 
there's some subplot about him not wanting to go to the same college as Nancy. Why not just tell her he's uh, lying to his family about receiving a college acceptance letter? What's he want to do? Just smoke dope with Argyle all day. Um, I just thought terrible use of his character in this season and not all the characters could be up front and center. So yeah. uh, he suffered. I, obviously he could have been better, but I thought it was just awful. Awful. Yeah. I'm going to agree with you again. Awful. He just wasn't in it a lot and maybe that's not his fault. You know, he just, he just didn't have a lot to, to play with this season. Not a lot of scenes, not a lot of important parts. And he didn't contribute much at all to the storyline. Feels like in the last couple of episodes, they tried to, they were like, holy cow, this guy's not been in it a lot. Let's try to give him some more scenes. And it just didn't play right. Uh, I think awful is good. And he's, you know, previous seasons, he's been pretty out to have him in like, could have been better, pretty good. Never amazing for sure. But yeah, he's taken a tank this season. And uh, I think awful is where he needs to be. I'm going to go out of line real quick, and we're going to do Dr. Owens next. Big Paul Reiser guy. Loved him in Beverly Hills Cop. Loved him in Aliens. Uh, yes. Mad yeah. About You. He was good in that. Great actor. He comes off as the most sincere of some of these characters. Like, he really cares about Eleven. But at the same time, he's working for a facility that – I know they're playing the role of good guy right now, but it's still a facility manipulating children. And I don't think people are thinking that fully through. Oh, but he's such a good guy. He's a, I think he's playing both sides, but you can tell he really cares for 11. And that's probably because he's the only, I mean, he knows she's the only way they can defeat Vecna. If Vecna ever appears on this realm again, we're all pretty much screwed. Yeah. He wasn't used much. So I'm going to put him in. Could have been better. Uh, like I said, great character, Paul Reiser. I mean, this was the revival of Paul Reiser. Uh, I mean, really good actor, should be in more stuff. I can't say enough about the guy, and it's a great character, too. I'm going to have him at pretty good. I, I think he's a really good character, and you can tell he actually cares, too, because he calls the government lady at some point. It's a quick scene. He calls the government lady. He's like, hey, we need to get somebody over to the house with. Eleven's friends and you know someone just kind of keep an eye on him. we need them safe she's worried about them let's do that and you're right you don't really know if like does he really care about Eleven all these or does he just know that Eleven's the only way we're all going to be saved but either way he comes off very genuine and uh I care for him as a character so in that case he's got to be pretty good not amazing but he's pretty good Next, we got Murray. Murray. So, Murray is another one. I love this character. I love this character. He was really good. He got his action scene in this one. He lights up all the demons with the flamethrower. He's always got the great one-liners. He's paranoid. I think Murray goes right up here with absolutely amazing, and I'm glad he lived. I'm glad he lives, and he's going to be in another season. I'm not sure he'll survive season five or if he'll even be around for season five, but he was an amazing character in this season. I'm going to have Murray. It could have been better. I just, I don't know. He just didn't do it for me. He did have good one-liners, but I just, just the title of that category could have been better. I just feel like for me, he didn't have a lot of substance and it just didn't, it did didn't do anything for me. I didn't, I wasn't, when he was on screen, it was just like, it, it did nothing. And especially with him and Yuri together, holy cow. When I was like, when is this, let's go back to the other people. Uh, so yeah, could have been better. But he knew karate and judo this season. So, I mean, that's great. He did. He did. I'm going to skip again and we're going to go with Joyce next. Winona Ryder hated her throughout the entire series. And I thought this the end of last season and this season really redeemed her character, in, in my opinion. And the arc with her and Hopper finally getting a kiss and having about five minutes of happiness. Uh, and, and, the, and, you know, I, I, I have a, a, a tendency to the fact that she's doing whatever she can in California to try to help keep these kids, you know, financially. Okay. She's being the telemarketer person. I thought why don't a writer played the character a lot 
less crazy this season. Yeah. And I'm going to say she was pretty good. Yeah, I'm going to agree. Pretty good. Um, it's almost like she's definitely not amazing, but she's like better than pretty good. You know what I mean? It, but you kind of, you just can't put her at amazing. I can't. I think she's, a, man, she's really good in this role. I think she plays it so well. And um, I root for her. There's not a lot of people. I love the series, but personally, there's just not a lot of people I'm rooting for. You know what I'm saying? And she's a good person. And I'm rooting for her. And uh, I think she's in a, a good spot there. All right. Down to the last two. We're going to go with Robin next. Robin subplot at the very beginning of it. See, I thought this goes with me not being a very observant TV watcher. I thought Robin had already graduated from school and that her and Steve were in the same grade. And yeah. when they were working at the ice cream place together and then working at the tape place together, I thought they were, I, I had no idea. So I was really confused at the beginning of the season when she's still in the band. So she's yeah. still in school. She's in love with another chick that they, they hired a Molly Ringwald lookalike that she's in love with. And there was that subplot of her wanting to reveal her feelings to that person, but then seeing with, seeing her with a guy, but then you see the looks on the other girl. Is she, or isn't she into Robin? Yeah. I thought Robin was a lot more likable in season three. Uh, they gave her sort of the clutch role in this one, but at the same time, I like the character. I really do. I feel sorry that I, I really do feel sorry. I know I'm talking about looks a lot. I really do feel sorry for somebody that's the daughter of Ethan Hawke and Uma Thurman that they're born looking this weird. But, uh, I mean, Ethan Hawke is one of the best looking people that ever hit the planet. And the daughters looks like the daughter looks like me. So, but the character aside, I thought the character was pretty stinking good. And she did another good job this season. All right, I'm going to put her at amazing, actually. I, I think she is very good. And her and Steve, this might kind of go back to season three a little bit, but season four, I think she played it just as well. Her and Steve together are, are such a good duo on screen. And I actually think I enjoyed them more once you realize that she likes females. And so then it kind of relaxed both of them. And their characters... Uh, got funnier together. They, they got more, a little more, maybe a little more serious together too, because they actually really care about each other, but not in a loving way. So they could be more free willing about it. And man, she's really, I, I think she's a really good character. And she's another one, like I said, that, I, or one of the few that I root for. So amazing. Last, we got Mr. Will Byers. The series started with this kid getting taken to the underground and if you believe the reports that are already out there, season five is going to focus heavily on him. They didn't do a lot with Will in this season. I know people are going to say I'm I'm crazy. They didn't do a lot with him. He that had a is. few he had a few breakdowns throughout it. L, why you're lying, Mike? Why don't you ever call me? And then it hit me. He's in love with Mike. I mean, and I know that's been a big topic on the internet. He's in love with Mike. Yeah. I mean, because uh, I, I was thinking early on, I was like, he's being really weird. He's going to come out in this season. And then he's got that scene where he looks over and he sees Mike and Eleven together. And like he just sort of like starts crying. Right. And that's when I was like, this dude's in love with Mike. And it's not that he's torn up about not being able to come out, which he is. He's torn up that he's not able to like, edit. So, I mean, total, total... <laughs> For the lack of lines that he had and for the lack of, you know, up front and center that he had, he did an amazing job because he's all that anybody can talk about after this season. He played the, you know, tortured teenager to perfection. To the point where I was like, man, just tell everybody, stop holding it in. Just tell everybody it's okay. But I'm going to put Will as amazing. All right. All right. Uh, I'm going to put Will as awful. I can't stand <laughs> him when he's on the screen. Uh, he didn't have a lot to go with this year. Uh, the I don't think he, 
I don't think he's a good actor. Um, I don't like his character. Sure, it was massive. He had a massive role in the series, the first two seasons. But man, this year is just, or this season, uh, just didn't think he did much. And he might have, a, like you said, he's probably going to have a massive role in the last season. But him, him and his brother, right there next to each other on our tier list here, just when they're together, and they were together the whole season, I think, this year. And uh, I just did not enjoy it at all. I, I just get off the screen. I don't, I don't care about him anymore. I don't know what that says about me, but he's like an OG. You know, him and Mike are like OG characters, and I don't care about either one of those guys anymore. So, yeah, awful for me. Okay, well, that'll do it. That's the entire important cast, anyway. We missed out on the general and the new sheriff of Hawkins and that deputy uh, that was making all the comments when they're trying to question all the kids. We met, well, I didn't put the parents in there. It's okay. But pretty good list, I think. We didn't agree on everything, which is, which is, which is okay. So, real quick, hit us in the comments what you agree with, what you don't agree with. Did we say anything? that you liked anything you don't like what would be your rankings put them in the comments below like and share this video boss thanks and everybody else we'll uh see you next time see ya